So David, where are you going on tour? Let us know. I'm still doing the uh, Catch Me Inside tour. It's been a blast. Um, I have Spokane coming up on the 16th. Great town. Uh, that's great. I got Palm Desert. We got a lot. Tyson's, Virginia, Richmond, Charlotte, North Carolina, New Orleans. Uh, is it New Orleans? New Orleans? Not New Orleans down there. Nah is Orleans. it just nah? New Orleans. <laughs> At the Orpheum, uh, Orlando, Clearwater, Vegas with Nikki Glaser. Lots coming up. Just go to davidspade.com and get those. And thanks, Dana. I'm glad that you're interested in that. I would check him out. He's one of the funniest stand-ups out there right now. It's a great show. Cheap tickets. Cheap, cheap. <laughs> Rack them. Cheap, cheap. Rack them. Hello, Dana. We'd like to tell everyone we are starting with Mikey Day today, who is a present cast member, 10-year vet. We got to know him very well. I might have to say, I don't think we've ever had a, a sweeter or nicer person on the podcast. We've had many... We've had many sweet and nice ones, but he was uh, incredibly uh, generous and curious about our careers, which was flattering, but also uh, very self-deprecating. And he, we go over his his tenure on SNL, and he's he's on there now, and he's he's got some amazing what with the pumpkin sketch. What's it called? David S. About? Pumpkins. Sorry, is David S. Pumpkins. He wrote, co-wrote. A lot of um, great sketches on that show. We broke down a few sketches, but mostly talk about the overall feel there. That, this one was very SNL. And then uh, mm -hmm. his co-stars, um, we talked about us a little bit, which is normal, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. We, we kept bringing, you know, you throw a no, boomerang it and it comes back to yeah. you. No, he, he was curious about us because he's maybe in the age group when he was like a very small little boy. Yeah. <laughs> I was on a the A baby show. in a crib watching us. <laughs> yeah. you know. uh, he's, a, he's the old war horse here. He's the grizzled vet. <laughs> he, looks, <laughs> he looks pretty good. Yeah, he looks pretty fresh face for being <laughs> yeah. a grizzled vet. But uh, I hope everyone enjoys it. We had a great time with him. Here he is, Mikey Day. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Sorry, this is, we've had this so many times. The worst was Martin Short. I know, but <laughs> not again. It's happening. I'm like, I'm seeing my heroes on screen, and then I'm hearing you guys do Lorne, and I'm like, I want to participate in this bit, and I can't. Oh. I can't get out. <laughs> well, what? Uh, where are? Where are you? Are you at? I'm in New York. Okay. I'm doing this. I was in this. Very small role in this Jerry Seinfeld movie in Netflix. Pop Tarts. They're doing like a promotion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're doing a promotional day. And it's so funny because it's the only day I've had something. And because I've, it's our two week hiatus. So I've yeah, just been yeah. at home. Yeah. And then, of course, the one day that I have this that I've been looking forward to. And I like went through all my stuff and my home computer to make sure that. I'd be good. And then the internet was yeah. failing and I was like, oh God, I see I them. I that my happens heroes. to almost my every heroes. person we do it. So don't worry. <laughs> we don't need another hero. That's very nice. Can I ask you a question? Uh, <laughs> Pop-Tart. Like if Jerry uh. did that, Jerry Seinfeld. Did, did I ever do Jerry Seinfeld's new album? He's coming out, vinyl. Go ahead. It's a vinyl album, comedy album, Jerry Seinfeld. And all this a picture of Jerry and it says, Paper clips, why? <laughs> Sorry. Paper clips, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Why? <laughs> but but the, the thing is, Jerry, as you know, is a, a technician. Like he worked mm -hmm. on his Pop Tart bit for like a, a years, right? And couldn't quite find the language. I felt like I found almost like an Easter egg of a fatal flaw in the bit. Oh. Uh -oh. And this, this is what it was. The, only about the stand-up, not the movie. That's why I'm curious if he does the theme. The, the idea was when Pop-Tarts came, it blew the, uh, right out of my head. Like the kids went, this is crazy. <laughs> the fatal flaw, because I'm in the same age group, mm -hmm. they weren't very good. What? <laughs> Whoa. Shut, Pop -tarts. Shut the fuck up. No, that was a lot of, you put them in the toaster, Dana. very little jam or good stuff. And that was the fatal flaw. He was playing it like the kids were blown away, but no, compared to a Twinkie or Hostess Cupcake. Right. Um, they were like, let's go to the phones. Jerry's on <laughs> line one right now. <laughs> I disagree. Um, well, that's so funny. Yeah. That's I, a I used hot to, take. <laughs> I used to eat them plain. 
Really? But compared to like a hostess pie, you know, with the crust around Ding it, dong. like those. Yeah. When I was a kid, those those were great. I feel like they're a lot now, but I would, as a kid, would 100% go for a hostess or a Twinkie over a Pop-Tart. Yeah, yeah. Pop-Tarts, was that's, that's fine. We had them, but uh, I'd be curious because Jerry, the technician, he would have some answer for that. He, well, <laughs> no. in the Pop-Tart movie, when is it coming out? Let's just promote that. Let's yeah, why not? Just count it as press. <laughs> it's in May. <laughs> I'm not here okay. to promote that. <laughs> That's fine. Throw it in the mix. I don't want you guys to feel like, oh God, he's got to promote his no, thing. No, but promote it comes out in May. I just found no, that not out. At all. No, we're what we do on this show is we like to uh we vet and we we shine a light on SNL cast members such as yourself. Uh because it because it's kind of fun because we've been in the maelstrom, we've been in in the War Room, we know everything about it, and you do too. So, David, do you have a question for Mikey? <laughs> yeah. Do you know this Seinfeld bit? I was out. The, I was out the other night eating at a Chinese restaurant, and and we were laughing. It was all comedians, and we were laughing at uh, when he 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 says chopsticks. They've seen the fork, <laughs> and they're what, still. Why? <laughs> what they've seen the fork and they're still sticking to, just out of spite they're still chicken sticking to chopsticks <laughs> it's very funny dana he's fantastic jerry will bludgeon an audience in a good way he will hit <laughs> like bludgeon. He, he'll go to the grocery store and just go around the store and have these amazing observations <laughs> and over time you just you're just my favorite of his was so they the caribou, they can't get them out of the forest and they wake up and they're hanging from the helicopter. What are they thinking? I guess I can fly now. <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing Ed Wynn as a substitute. I know. <laughs> it turned oh into God. Love. And you guys know who Ed Wynn is. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of Paul Lynn. Who did Ed Wynn? Ed Wynn was like from the 1940s. He was kind of chubby, has a little, had a little hat on, he go. Whoop de doo, whoop de doo. Oh, okay, yes, 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 yes. Did I did I get it? <laughs> hey, Mikey, have you heard that when Paul Lynn came into a party <laughs> in the seventies, <laughs> he goes, uh, uh, "Smells like pussy in here." <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's that happened. Fantastic. I think my friend was there. Wait, did he do the Mad uh, Hatter, Edwin? Or am oh. I he uh, that was Paul Lynn even. did the smell. Yeah, of even. Even. <laughs> yes. Even. I think Adam Sandler had a little audio influence. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, about who? yeah. Yeah, but in the same frequency. 100%. <laughs> I can't. I am fascinated. First of all, I love you both, obviously. I'm going to be gross. Thank you, buddy. But I saw, we'll take it. Thank you. <laughs> let me. I saw. Clean slate in the movie theater, Dana. Fuck yeah. 94 by myself. I'm sorry. And mm. saw no, I I remember enjoying it. And black sheep in the movie theater. I mean, Tommy like, Boy, obviously. Again, but... No one was there by myself. <laughs> black sheep was great. Black sheep. Was, um, yeah. I'll tell you about clean slate. I didn't really know what I was doing, but anyway, uh they, in those days you'd have dailies. So it was like 10 minutes of the movie. And so I'm in a theater, I kind of by myself, I think, and I'm watching the dailies. And I go, oh, it's terrible. <laughs> How many weeks do I have left? Seven more weeks. It's Uh-oh. irretrievable. Uh-oh. But everyone's got a dog in their house. Come on, man. Um, but uh, that's very flattering. You know, when we did a, we were talking about you a while back. And for Uh-oh. some reason, I had a mental hiccup, and I kept calling you Mikey Day Let me call oh, on Mickey. the podcast. It was Mickey. in Bobby's. Mickey. I was calling you Mickey. I was because calling I, you Mikey instead of Mickey. No, it's actually Mikey. No, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I sorry about that. that. It's because I worked with I Mick, Mickey care. Rooney. I worked with Mickey Rooney, oh, and that's yeah. what got in my head. But So you were Michael, and how did you become Mikey? Is that a I know. Or? I use the- It's a big jump. The chat. I- <laughs> Devin Walker on the show was like, and are you sticking with Mikey <laughs> in your adult life? This is, you're not going to change it? I was, all, I mean, I was always Michael. And then in college, people just started calling me Mikey and it just kind of stuck. But I think I remember my first year here, the first pitch meeting 
Lauren yeah. kind of going, Mike, like, is this grown man going by Mikey? Is this what we're doing here? <laughs> Do I need to call this grown man Mikey? But yeah. Have you thought just... about Big Mike? Have you thought Perhaps about something? Big Mike? Does everyone do Lauren when they come on? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you uh, have a little breath coming. You have a breathy. Oh, that's a new thing. Yeah. Let, let's see how you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, well, you, know, you look a little like Ed Sullivan. I'm sorry to go back to the 70s. I mean, again. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. You hear like Bill Hader and stuff. They're like, okay. Bill Hader is mind. that little quiet one is so hilarious. Right. It was me, Jeff Dahmer. Um, <laughs> a celebrity. Yeah, we always like doing Lorne, the bit of him being excited about stuff because he's so even keeled just right. him being like oh my god did you oh my god did you hear like it's just <laughs> funny imagining <laughs> oh shit oh Beyonce is coming up everyone places oh my, everything yeah just about stupid nerdy stuff oh I my know, god I... did you see the trailer for Deadpool 3 oh <laughs> <laughs> Deadpool 3 <laughs> did you ever go to a Yankees game with him oh yeah once the Yankees games with Lauren are the best because it was like uh, it'll be you, Lorne, and Senator Chris Dodd. And you're like, what? Mm -hmm. Yes, he's a very cool dude, but it's you never know who's... I there. had, uh, if you remember, I think he passed away. Uh, we're going in uh, Paul um, and Louis Louis May. Louis Mao, the French director, is coming with us. <laughs> you know, like, you're like, okay. <laughs> he's never seen baseball, but... But and it's a <laughs> grand it slam. It, it's like that thing of like the crowd's really going nuts. Uh, could I, <laughs> would you like another beer? Uh, it's we love better him. than a home run because the bases, of course, are loaded. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Well, it's the fourth inning. Should we leave? <laughs> and it's like, should we take off? Should we go? I was there once, and it, there was a rain delay, so we were in like the restaurant area near oh. the those seats. But like, it was so crowded because everyone was in there, and there's nowhere to sit. And it was weird just being like, I'm with Lauren and he has nowhere to sit. We need to fix Do this something. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. And so these, we were just sitting at this like large circular table with these very like Yankees fans, dudes. <laughs> it was very surreal, but it was like two hours. And then they finally just canceled the game. L Lauren's <laughs> like, I see one bar stool. I'll catch up with you guys later. <laughs> Deuces. Um, just drinks up at the bar, <laughs> slamming shots. Lauren? Lauren, I, I I don't know how you guys did the show before, like cell phones and text messages, because the amount of information that you're mm -hmm. constant, especially on Saturday, did you just call each other's dressing rooms? I guess go, yeah, <laughs> and just visit people. I guess I guess you need. Did you just talk to people? <laughs> I know. Yeah, we did. I mean, we do that, but like throughout the week, like talking to props and stuff, like we need this and just the constant communication. I'll say the worst part, Mikey, uh, was it, it, for the for those of you at home, the show is on the eighth floor, <laughs> and not only are the offices on seventeen, but you still have to cross elevators. I think. Oh so yeah. So you have to go take two different elevators to get back to your office, and it was all day going back and forth because you couldn't <laughs> text, you couldn't. If you call someone, they're never in their dressing room. So you have to go look for people. If oh. you could text them, God, the layer of stress of just would be too much. anything in Marcy Klein running around looking for Norm McDonald or something. It's just all crazy. So I wish I had that. We didn't have computers, laptops to write our sketches. So we had to drive them in from home, <laughs> hand them in on paper. I would write them rest, long, come longhand, back, type yeah, it longhand up. and hand them in. Yeah. Yeah. You hand them in longhand and then they write, they type them. Day. <laughs> there was like a big stack or something. Cause I, I think I heard yeah. Mike Myers talking about writing up Wayne's world. And he said there was like a big bin or something of scripts and he would just, he like, put it into the yeah which then, is crazy put it in the stack and then they would take it like madmen type it one at a time i think we were using hieroglyphics <laughs> hey <laughs> yeah and so we just did that and yeah. then you'd get your sketch yeah. and you'd get it before a read through and you'd be like oh my god there's misspelling or they put the host name wrong or they put the wrong and you're like it's too late we're in that's so. insane yeah now you just drop it in to the file and onto the server it's all on the computer. 
That's uh, files and attachments are too much for Seems me. I wouldn't know we had a bulletin that. board. Look at the difference here. We had a small bulletin board with letters of the week, like maybe 10 letters that you could get feedback from the audience compared to what you guys have now. Oh, really? social media. Oh, That's all, yeah. yeah. People going, I hate you. <laughs> there were some, oh, you should do this and that. But it was like 10 letters. That was it a week that we just saw on a board. That was the only feedback. <laughs> that guy likes me in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. That's one. <laughs> what was, uh, just because people are going to want to know, what was your journey? How, how much you want to share? You like, you were a theater arts guy in high school, sure college. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then went to UCLA and studied. Oh. Oh. Did you have yeah. a dream? Did you have a dream of how that would go and was SNL part of it? Or you just like want to be in show business and want to make a living doing this or both? I mean, SNL was always kind of at the, at the top, I would say. Um, but it just felt so far away and unattainable. Mm -hmm. And then I started taking classes at the Groundlings and there's so many pictures of there, there of people on SNL. And so it felt a little more attainable, but it still felt far away and the odds would be impossible. And then I knew, I went to college with Nassim Pedrad and Taryn Killam, who were mm. on the oh, cast. Yeah. Definitely. And then they brought me in as a writer. Mm, suddenly Mikey doesn't sound so crazy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mikey like, like, sounds like, like a, a, a Nickelodeon show. It sounds like a Nickelodeon show. Nassim, Taryn, and Mikey. Um, but hey, everybody. It's Mikey. Hey. <laughs> it does feel very Nickelodeon. Whoa. On an all new Mikey. Um, but they brought me in as a writer and then mm -hmm. wrote for three. Were you allowed to write seasons. for yourself? Pardon? Were you allowed to write for yourself? No, I was just a writer at the time isn't that isn't that horrifying it weren't did, weren't you didn't you start as a writer yeah i didn't want i was a writer performer which is worse it was like oh, pretending okay. i could write for myself but so i really you were like shouldn't. a writer and performer yeah but no one's writing anything for me and so i have to write and then i wheeze myself in two lines and they're like what are you doing i'm like <laughs> no i'm just i'm the teenager so they're like no mike myers yeah. can put a baseball cap on i'm like and you're oh, like fuck uh okay I would yeah, go. Right for the cast. I would go around to Sandler and Spade would be in an office, and I go, guys, guys, come on, anything this week? Come on, exactly. What do you, you would. What do you got guys. for me, guys? What do you got for me? <laughs> I'll just go around to the offices, going, I can play kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no, you can't. <laughs> um, yeah, can you do a Russian accent? Everything was like, can you, they just poke their head in some good writer and be like, can you sing? And I'm like. Sort of. Nope. Took too long. You can't. I'm like, God damn it. They're like, can you do a whatever impression? Yeah. 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 How how are you with it. a pogo yeah. stick? I got that one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can do it. I can do Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Can you do it at the table? Would you guys <laughs> ever do st commit at the table to certain bits or would you always remain seated? No, we give it everything. I, oh, to I stand did, up, I've stood up. I same. remember if you, if you stand up, it's kind of like, okay, <laughs> it's a little bit of a swing. <laughs> it's on. You Here better fucking nail it. You ever Here go to the piano go. and sing? People would walk Ooh. over to the piano and I'm like, oh my God, Cheryl would play. And I'm like, you better, you, this better be a home run. Better. Yeah. yeah. You're like, ooh, it's mid second half. I don't know, a <laughs> piano bit. <laughs> mid second half, I'm reading through. Oh my God. We it's hour it, four. Yeah, we call it like dead man's curve, like second Fuck. half. Okay. You like, light up on those last two. You're like, Coming yeah, to that, a close. That area. Dennis um, would just sit and watch us. Okay. Moving toward the ivories in the fourth hour of this <laughs> extravaganza. Okay. Okay, babe. So, All right. Dude, I, My dude, I wish. Dennis Miller is Dana doing Dennis Miller. All I have right. a, new, a new Dennis Miller. That was that Dennis. Dennis now is sort of soft-spoken. Okay, I got a couple shekels in my pocket. Nothing. <laughs> You want to go back there and visit the old team out in New York City? It's great, Carf. It's not something I'm really up for right now. Okay? All right. Hey, <laughs> Spudley, you see what I sold my house for? You might want to fucking Google it. Because as a kid, quoting you guys was like the cool thing to do on the playground. Yeah. And now yeah. My, my son quotes Playground. like weird 
gen alpha memes and stuff that make no sense. I feel like <laughs> as for adults, when we would quote SNL, like adults would watch SNL. So you had some mm -hmm. context, you understood mm -hmm. stuff. But now, like, I have no idea what comes out of my son's mouth sometimes. How old is like, he? He's 11. And he just comes home singing like, you're my phantom tax. You're so skibbity. I'm like, what, <laughs> what? is this? At least I can quote, bye-bye, and you understand. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Bye-bye. Was Helen Hunt the first bye-bye? Yeah, there's only two. Yeah. There's only uh, two? Helen Hunt. Only yeah. two, and it blew up like crazy. And the second one didn't even matter. It was Steve Martin, but. We kind of fucked it up, but uh, I heard you tried one where you said what? hello as the as they're coming on the plane. Hello, hello. hello. No, that's John, John Lovitz. Hello, oh, yeah. hello. and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> you do it, <everybody>. yeah. <laughs> no, we did it once, and then it was on American Airlines. They would play it for the flight attendant, saying, "This is our reputation. We have to fix this." So every <laughs> flight attendant might take a flight for ten years and be like. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm like, you're still saying fuck you, yeah. so it, it's all bad. Are we a bye bye company? No, 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 no. <laughs> when you leave Burger King now on the on the door, tapes it said bye bye, and I'm like, no, bye bye. Now, no. you, what do you guys? One? What do you guys say? I wrote that with Fred Wolf. Yeah, oh, I wrote Bubba. that with Freddie Wolf. Fred Wolf's great writer that was on there. Were you like out of town and? You were it was, on the plane it was, and you were like, no, it was his idea. And he came to me and I'm like, oh, this is just a joke machine. You just yeah. put every, every Bye -bye. cast member comes Bye -bye. through. Mm -hmm. Everyone say gets something. some screen time. It gets a little, how it gets a little more heated as you go. And mm -hmm. Helen Hunt looks perfectly innocent. Perfect one to do it. Yeah. Bye -bye. Do, you, do you feel, I have a question, Charlie. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's my face here. Um, Charlie Finham was on the, his, his name is right in front of my face. I'm not crazy. He's just uh, one of our producers. <laughs> how, how was the interview? Dana called me Charlie the whole time, but I <laughs> well, didn't correct. But it. it is on the screen. I'm just curious that you now, you're there, and I was looking at the new cast, and mm -hmm. just this whole thing that I didn't have that much. The new guys came in, then I mm -hmm. left. But this turnover, you're writing these multiple generations, the Kate McGinnon people and Tara. Right. And, and now you have, I looked at, you know, Chloe Feynman, you have, I don't know, Ego with him. I'm trying to get all the names. Andrew. Punky Ego I mean, how do you, are you, are you like sort of taking people on your wing a little bit? Do you know, I mean, you're like, you kind of know the system. You're a 10 year lifer. You're right? like Brock you're, you're Purdy as crazy. a quarterback. You know the system. <laughs> <laughs> I know how it operates. But, but so I when listen. people come in and they watch you and you're in so many things and we'll get to your superstar I mean, sketches. Sometimes. Um, that you, do they, they ask you stuff, you, you, you feel you can help them out or what's that like with new, new fresh recruits coming off the, uh, do you box them out? Do you ice them? Do you get <laughs> no. in their heads? They look like Ooh. the aliens, you know, they look like Amelia Earhart coming off the mothership in Looked Close Encounters. <laughs> Deer in yeah. the headlights, babe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would like Joe Kazem, like first table, but I mean, it's. I feel like it's definitely very friendly. I've definitely heard stories about kind of the show in past years. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. sounds kind of intense and the competition. Maybe those stories are like, blown mm. out of proportion as the years go mm, on not really. but i feel like if it's very friendly and everyone's you know what it is nice, mikey but... it's like the bachelor where they're all friendly at the beginning and then it gets down to like and then it starts to, to the get show towards time the end. and you're like wait you're still here and, and it's, it's, it's either you or them yeah and it's just the bachelor they're always friendly until toward the end and then they're like can thing. i can I pull you aside? He's been really saying shitty things about you. And they're like, what? And like, no, I'm just saying, I just feel like you should know. Well, the, freak, the then, freakitude of somebody getting loose, like going out and making a hit movie or, you know, then, then the kind of the apple cart is sort of rocked a little bit. Mike and I, with the freakitude of Wayne's World, at, at a certain point, they would bring in giant, like stuff you'd put laundry in with fan mail, <laughs> you know. That it is, was. I can't imagine being on the show, mm -hmm. and a couple cast members were in a movie that was not only successful, but Wayne's World was like an insane, insane cultural touchstone. And you guys yeah. were still on the show. Yeah. 
And yeah, then, they were bigger than the host sometimes. Yeah, it would be like, when would you decide to do Wayne's World? I remember as a kid, like they would air it on Comedy Central. They would air one hour reruns mm -hmm. and taping it and waiting for the little Aurora, Illinois, little uh -huh. cable access right. graphic. Um well, and that's how I was kind of introduced to that era of SNL. I remember when I was a little, little, my dad showed me some rerun of Coneheads, like of <laughs> SNL. It was Coneheads on Family Feud. I'd never seen the show. <laughs> on and Family was, Feud is a fucking great one. <laughs> <laughs> what did you like, name <laughs> something you bite into. And Dan Aykroyd's like, a trapeze. I was like, what? <laughs> it's so funny. Is this? I love it. Name something you eat with eggs. Fiberglass. Yes. <laughs> and Bill Murray's so gross. So like, it's so, so fucking and funny. And, but yeah. the ske those sketches were long back in the day. I was like, this is 11 minutes. <laughs> right? They'd go to a commercial and come back to the end of the Family Feud sketch. <laughs> yeah. You're like, 11 minutes? Um, yeah. <laughs> But you know what? Uh, I just saw your. Uh, there was a couple funny ones we're jumping around, but uh, the one. Oh, when you were in the car recently with Quentin. The, I, was, I think oh, the yeah, traffic yeah. altercation one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was one of those sketches that you look at and you go, oh, man. What what a brilliant notion! <laughs> Tight, very well done. And yeah, did, that did, did you write or co-write that or has an ending? Yeah, I done it. I um, a very loose version at Groundlings and Sunday Company mm -hmm. a while ago, live with um Kevin Bernson, and was like, I wonder if you can adapt this. I mean, I had to change it a lot for the TV cameras. Yeah, yeah. It it was cool that they were able to figure it out though. It's funny they yeah. all, they all whenever there's cars and sketches, they bring in these massive yeah. black sedans, and so we both. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really see in the sketch, but we're both driving, I think, identical, massive black sedans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey! Generic, yes. huge. TV cars. Like Packard from the 50s. Just yeah. gross inside. <laughs> I like, did like at the end, they pull away and then you can see for one second the green screen and how you got, because I'm like, I didn't see the camera at the beginning, but then, you, and then I thought it was a pre-tape because they were showing you from down here and her close up. Yeah, they did. And then when job. they pull away, I go, oh, it is live. Because I, I remember Lauren used to say they always would rather have it live if they could. And yeah. uh, so, and that was a great one. I mean, it's cool when you can try to play with the, I guess, parameters of live stuff. Like I write with Streeter Seidel and mm -hmm. Streeter Seidel and I write all the time together. And we're always trying to think like, what's something kind of different we could do to play with the medium because it's cool if you can score uh with a live sketch because the pre-tapes you just have more time and you can kind of play with it a lot more and i think people sure. are more used to seeing film stuff you know online but to have something that works live and kind of of resonates with people is a lot of fun. Sorry, just live. Something can go wrong, even in a great sketch. It just gets tilted. Yeah. There's a miscue, yeah. and it can unravel even a great sketch. So for this one, it seemed like your air, you landed it probably the best of the week. That Yeah. I mean, it really landed. Yeah, it, it felt in, great. Yeah. yeah. It definitely, um, Colin Jost, because there's a moment when Chloe, who plays my daughter, Chloe Feynman, she... Yes is miming like you suck and she's um using the funny <laughs> she uses two hands. both her hands and then yeah. colin jost in the hallway came up and pitched the joke he's he was like you should say i don't love that you use two hands yeah. which was one of the <laughs> funniest lines in the sketch big laugh like, her doing you, that was colin. funny you saying that was funny Call calling her a bitch and pointing at her was funny and then you did it was oh, hilarious yeah. And yeah, Quint that Quinta was, Brunson uh, was perfect in it as she well. Was, yeah, she did a great job. She was great because at the table, I was like, there's a lot of gesturing. And I kind of mm -hmm. gave her an example, but you can't really script out, you yeah. know, like, yeah, there's too many. Move your left hand. So she kind of was on her own at the table to kind of sell it and figure it out. And she was great. She totally got it. And when you're watching cards, you don't know, like, 
if you're watching cards, you're like, oh, wait, this is the one where I have to go my left hand and I have to stay in frame and yes. I have to say this and do it. And then you're like, now the next one, oh, wait, eating is this. Oh, yeah, I point back. You know, that, that, and my, you could just people see people thinking because it looked hard in my head going, shit, if I was there, the cards have to be perfect. You have to either write on the, remember to do this or, you know, you have no notes. You're just like, okay, we've rehearsed it probably twice this week. <laughs> That's it. I Let's know. go. Yeah. yeah I, I remember during the blocking of it, there was an issue with the um, window and the reflection and you could like oh, see right. the camera and the red light. And I was like, oh, we're going to get screwed because of a oh. stupid <laughs> reflection. Because I've had sketches go to dress mm -hmm. and there's like some sort of reflective surface and you just see the red light and the flipping of cards the whole time. And you're like, <laughs> no, you just no. they're going to cut it. Yes, yeah. you don't. You can just hear what's going on under the bleachers with Lauren and the writers. Mm -hmm. You're like. What it's the being fuck is happening? Torn to shreds. Um, but it worked out in the end, which was awesome. And that's kind of the thrill of it when you're doing something kind of different. And, and I, I would say just for, for, for myself is a sketch like that. Like you, you guys are both doing this physical comedy. The argument is escalating between the drivers. And then we get to in real time, see what you do, how you're going to mime right. out your insult. And so right. even people in a bar and it's kind of loud would probably watch it and, and, and laugh. So you got yeah, things yeah. going you on figure it out. all the time. And then it escalates into sexual things and had a really sweet- <laughs> As they all do. Yeah, why not? Why not? Guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> not in bulbous parts. <laughs> Throbbing in- <laughs> But uh, this other one that got called out recently by our friend Ben Stiller is another- uh, amazing sketch the oh, home, yeah. what a home nice movies man. sketch i know i don't right yeah he's that was written sweet. by dan bulla and stephen castillo bulla 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 bulla, bulla. They, uh, love him they gave me a great part it was like a little present they're like here you go can you do this it was so much so much fun and then ben stiller was such a kind wonderful man tweeted that he is a very sweet person yeah. like you he know. didn't have to do that man and you gave me swag for a week it's so funny at that show you're like i'm feeling good and then you'll have like a bad sketch bomb at table read and you'll be like i suck i'm the worst mm -hmm. <laughs> what am i, I doing yeah. here <laughs> the next week ben goes i saw the worst sketch ever on snl this week yeah and it was the same guy get that guy <laughs> off the gas isn't it bizarre it's the same guy let's check it out what happened? least valuable player I'm going to start tweeting compliments at, at SNL cast members. I just hit me how lonely it is on that show sometimes. You know, one week you're like, I, I got one or two, three things at work. And then next week. Yeah. Rick, it's, it's, it's strange. It's kind of the best, <laughs> I guess, best and worst part. Because even if you have a bad week, you're like, oh, all right, there's always next week. And it literally starts all over again. And you can turn it around what did you what did you think that so that the, it's been biden's been passed around for a decade now <laughs> <You know? laughs> nobody woody harrelson everybody matthew mcconaughey everyone's every, everyone's biden. doing biden he's a puzzle he's a puzzle he's difficult he's not yeah. you know trump is obviously easy uh all, Just all a madman spew, crazy, spewing and not doing things we're gonna i mean so many hooks and james is still teasing out hooks Oh yeah, we you know, love it. We love yeah, he's the Ramadan. Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. And then Biden is in this frequency that's very difficult, you know, energy wise, because you can't yell. Like I could kind of with Ross Pro, I could be, you know, can I finish? Can I finish, finish any time? Physical and loud. You know? I just want to quote all of your guys' old stuff. <laughs> Uh, Can I finish? I like I, that one. I'm enjoying this podcast quite a bit because this this notion that you right now are having mm -hmm. somebody who's watching SNL for the first time go, did you, you see that guy, that traffic sketch that guy did? <laughs> Didn't even know your did name. You that, see, that funny guy. Yeah, That traffic thing was funny. Is Biden's kind of, uh, we'll see, but I like that traffic one. Well, as, but no one, no one has really uh, kicked, uh, solved Biden in, in studio, in 8H, which I think is a rock and roll room. It does, uh, it can be quiet. It can, yeah. but, but generally speaking, if you have energy at home base, 
it it's helpful, you know. Yeah, you're the first you get so up there, and he whispers, but yeah, because he's in this. I mean, back in the day when he was doing, you know, the running with Obama, Sudeikis played him. It was so funny. He's like, yeah. it's Biden time because he was like, I'm gonna get on a train and just <laughs> sit and sing, yeah. sing malarkey and like old school Biden was very like I. I've had enough of your shit. I'm going to call yeah, you yeah. out. And he was a very up had and that happy. Temper. Yeah. yeah. And funny he's teeth. Kind of re- yeah. Now he's this kind of older man. And so you don't want to go out there and be like, uh, lose your train of thought. Cause it's kind of sad. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's the Nothing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, right. When he loses his train of thought, it's cause you know, he's, you know, an older it's dude. It's like he got hit with a dart gun in the neck. Right before the speech, then he's like, uh, oh, "What was that? Yeah. What was I saying?" Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's sorry. unplugged. His batteries are going. Bluh, bluh, bluh. I I mean, the only thing I could do is just try to make it silly, you know. So I have that yeah. Hunter Biden is the only one who can really understand him. Hey, how you do? <laughs> how you doing, Dad? Yeah, it's going. It's going to be No, I already ate, but maybe tomorrow night. I guess uh, so I'm saying. Yeah, I can go with lasagna. Right. <laughs> so it's like not Dad. gonna do it. It's like it's like not gonna do it. I mean, you gotta just go, just make up what Biden might be, and that just right. And then his that's funny. His his son's the translator. Dad. Yeah. Does he's anyone know what Hunter him. Biden talks like? I mean, I, yeah, just, I, know. I just figure he's kind of a dude. He looks like he's kicking it on the planet. He's just like an, well, yeah, an older finance looking dude. Yeah, <laughs> I do not know how he talks. I Does any guy gonna... host ever come in and say, I want to play Hunter? I don't know. I don't think so. I know Pete played him. And he was on one of those wheeled hoverboards. That's all I remember. He just kind of mm-hmm. passed frame on one of those hoverboards, <laughs> I guess, because he's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a young kid. But I don't know if anyone's like cracked Hunter. Yeah, because I don't even know what he sounds like. The, the public doesn't know. I mean, he gave that little speech in, in the Capitol, but um, yeah, you just kind of know like it's laptop. a generic guy yeah there's not a lot of voice that the public is aware of i'm not <laughs> yeah so i just, just go like this hi hi i'm hunter biden when in doubt just say the name of the person you're doing <laughs> i know oh 100 percent. hey wait a I'm minute hunter it's, biden. it's hunter biden <laughs> hunter biden just walked in the room like, i'm robin leach i'm famous i don't know yeah, why i don't know why you know don't all my know characters why. That's I mean, you difference. guys were gagu 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 ga. I think I'm, Hollywood, I'm, I'm, um, yeah, Chloe, Holly, Hollywood minute is the first, the first time I heard the phraseology of "Hey, the nineteen Somebody whatever called, called which, yeah. and I liked it first time when it was called. It was called yeah, 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 yeah. I believe it was pioneered there. Um, I that did you invent so, that but, phrase, David? Because that is a that is like a, a thing in the ether now. For you know, the eighties called wants their yeah. shirt back. Yeah, yeah. They did say in that Rolling Stone Saturday Night Live thing that that was started there. Wow. I, 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 right? I think so. I hope so. It still hasn't gone away. It got kind of it got kind of a uh, tired a little bit, but it still pops up in commercials and stuff. But now so. it's just kind of like a, a it's common, just out there now accepted yeah. insult package yeah <laughs> by the way hey. when i was watching the super bowl heidi gardner she was in yes. the super bowl more than travis kelsey <laughs> she's a huge chiefs fan too so was she was in like oh, for makes every sense. third commercial yeah i didn't even know too i was like heidi she's awesome she was at groundlings as well so I'm yeah very... she's a sweetheart she came on and talked to us she was great uh i know and, she's like um, yeah i did fly on the wall i was like wow you did Oh, I don't, <laughs> those guys don't like me. I don't know. Do you think they'll ask me? <laughs> do they? We, do they like me? We want everybody. Remember you guys. You yeah, guys we haven't Bobby talked to everybody. We, we. Oh yeah, Bobby on. Uh, Bobby Moynihan. Um, we should get Taryn on. You know, Taryn Killian. Yeah, Taryn. Taryn Killian, uh, who's had an incredible run on that show as well. And, uh, Wait, yeah. what about Is It Cake Day? And I have to ask him about something about Is It Cake. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Be- That's a be- cool show. Wait, <laughs> That's a you, game. You, you guys know what Is It Cake is and you're over yeah. the age of six? <laughs> I, I actually, I, I like it. Kids love it. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. It, it seems just fun. 
it's so when they first told me what the concept was, I was like, what? <laughs> and <laughs> You're like, then, is that all it is? And you go, yeah, but it's, there's a show there. It feels very much like the show is aware that it's called, is it cake and play? There's like a lightness to it. And mm -hmm. there's kind of an innate humor to it because mm -hmm. of how ridiculous the concept is. But at the same time, it's really cool to see what those bakers do. I mean, no, they they do like a geniuses. great job with it. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, but kids have responded to it, and it's of remarkable course. that they they love it. Not just the end game part; they like are really into how they create these bakers, how they create yeah. cakes. Which I guess maybe because maybe it's like almost like a magic trick, seeing how they how they do it. But it's really interesting that kids respond to it, and then it stumps all the dumb celebrities. They like that part. <laughs> Yeah, they're like, <laughs> although Ego came on um, and did very, very well. She was really good at it. Too well. Maybe she would find. She won't yeah. be back. <laughs> I know. You're like, you're, it's weird because for the judges, they're like, if they find it, you're, you, I know, you're you in don't danger want of not winning money. I just did a game <laughs> show. And the funny thing was, I was telling Dana is they want some, they want, some comedy they all want some comedy and obviously that's why they get you and then when you go out there do they try to juice you to be a little more energetic and <laughs> there is always um in my ear like uh, another one more. a little more energy we'll have some more you know, energy. Have some fun out yeah. there yeah explain the I'll, rules again yeah you're like i just my least favorite part is explaining like if they do miss, then they'll go into the prize pot for another two twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> However, pot. if they're spared and you're like, yeah, same I know. Like and everyone's like, we heard pot. that right before the fucking commercial. We know about the goddamn prize pot. And you're <laughs> like, show well, me the T-Rex that looks that's made out of cake. <laughs> yeah. Someone hit it with a hammer and we'll figure it out. But I mean, everyone, everyone involved with that show is fantastic like they're very they're very like do whatever you want it's not like um so we need to do it again <laughs> they're very like <laughs> yeah just have fun with it so i've been lucky in that respect no it sounds like a fun one it sounds like a cool one you guys got to come on i'll come well, on we gotta go you're, you're cutting out i'll, I'll come on <laughs> <laughs> when, how, when dana you... <laughs> and david gave a very mixed possibly no. So we've they got a might. couple verbal. We've got some soft yeses. Uh, well, you know what? I'm going to talk. My team, my team will reach out to you. I oh, like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Polite and no Team, team is discussing it. What about David S. Pumpkins, Dane? I remember we had Tom Hanks on. We were laughing about that. Uh, one, uh, a, oh, a man. singularity as a sketch, as odd weirdness, one of my all-time yeah. favorites. And I know yeah, that's that awesome. You were, you were, it, it, well, you know, it's just special. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. What, what yeah, do you, when, it, when do I, you know it's working? I don't know. It was so <laughs> weird. We wrote it. It was like four a.m., and I had gone to Disneyland all the time because I grew up in southern california and mm -hmm. went on when i forget when hollywood adventure or whatever there yeah where things california pop out. adventure yeah. yeah and then there right. was that tower of terror ride that's what i'm trying to get to um yeah. it's just very to me lends itself to a sketch format with like a doors opening and something yeah. crazy mm -hmm. closed doors yeah. again and then <laughs> so, so funny it made us laugh but it's it's funny because there's no like hard joke jokes in it where you're like okay well that's at least we know a joke it's all just i'm weird and then them and then it works to, though yeah it, and when so, it works with that shit well it's could crazy. i could i insert this <laughs> my point of view on this some sketches are so funny you can't really laugh at them the first time but then later <laughs> on, like, you'll laugh more because there's so many questions. Why are they in this right? Who is this guy? <laughs> Why is the other? There's all these questions in your head. Yeah. You, and then you, when you start to process it later on, it just makes you smile. I mean, Hanks's commitment to it and joy of it was so funny. And then, and then you guys being the people reacting, it was just perfect. <laughs> oh my it, god, it is in, perfect. It, on read through day, in between the first and second half, you know you. 
meet with the host and kind of briefly tell them like, okay, <laughs> you're playing a crazy German man in this or whatever. Yeah. So we told him, so you're just kind of this guy, David Pumpkins, and he talked a lot more in the first version, but we're like, you're just kind of a uh, really upbeat and friendly and like you belong there. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and so, I mean, he's Tom Hanks, so we committed, but, and I, I know we've talked about this. I think Bobby mentioned it, but in between dress and air, he's like, I don't know if I have a read on Mr. Pumpkins yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to laugh. <laughs> so then he on air. He's won he two Academy crazy. Awards. Oh, so he, he did something else with his hands or something for I, air? He I just feel made it, like, yeah, on air is when he was really like, he just he weirded it up it or up. something. Yeah, he kicked it up to like insane because he's, you watch the first one, he's just like staring slightly off. He's just a complete madman, but mm -hmm. it's like the power of Tom Hanks and coupled with like Halloween and kind of the feeling in the country. It was like right before the election. I just feel like all the ingredients were there, but. It's been mm -hmm. awesome to see, like I'll see online of, you know, kids in Halloween costumes and dress yeah. their dogs up as the skeletons. And there's a dude at uh, Universal Studios during Halloween who wanders the park as, oh, Hanks, which was like, funny. all right, that's You've made great. it. That's, that's made when it. you, I love a Halloween costume. If you can get a sketch to be a costume, that's a hundred percent. Yeah. Big. Also, a lot of these uh, sketches, as Dana knows, yeah, the first Coneheads, the first Gap Girls, the first, almost first anything doesn't do that well because they're taking it all in, like Dana was saying. Yeah. They don't know until a lot of times on SNL, you just hammer it home till they're like, all right, we get it. Fuck, stop <laughs> It's a thing it. now. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thing. And we're telling you it's a thing. But sometimes these organically, they turn into, so the next time you come out, if you hear enough about them, so you do do it again, then they're all ready and they get it. They're on board. And then it does way better. But sometimes the first ones are crickets. But how would you guys know, yeah, we should keep doing this? Because it was Letters. <laughs> I don't know. The first Hans and Franz bombed. Really? Yeah, I'm sure. Because yeah, they, we, because it was so, they th thought we were going to lift heavy weights or something. And all we did was berate imaginary <laughs> enemies. With what we do now and believe me later. Yeah, we'll yeah. come to your house and we'll, we'll put the shape of your flab into a rope ladder so you can crawl back <laughs> down in the sewer because that's where losers <laughs> live. And the audience is kind of like, what? Who are they Wait, talking to? Mm -hmm. uh, why are so they mad at me? <laughs> why are they mad at me? I still do it to this day. It's just sort of fun to be sorry. <laughs> Mikey and you guys Day is our guest. <laughs> Look at Mikey Day, girly man, with your petite frame. You're a grown man. Ooh, like with a little V-neck t-shirt. You Ooh, better not on V-neck. <laughs> I'll snap that V. Um, what, are, what are you working on uh, now? For yeah. today? So for, uh, you're coming out in another 10 days, 12 days from now with a show. Have you got a little something you can share with us in your back Who pocket? Who is it? Do we know? Keep it quiet, though, um, actually. <laughs> Do we know Shane Gillis? Who's the, that? Uh, Who's Shane oh, Gillis? All right. Shane He's a stand-up, very <laughs> successful stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. No, we know. He but... was actually, um, he got hired to be on the cast, and then all that stuff went down with- um, you, did, you didn't say the word fired. You said he got hired, and all that stuff went <laughs> down. <laughs> he got let um, go. Let, let make this stuff go down, please. <laughs> We're going um, in a different direction. He's landed on his feet, but that no. was sort of an odd, bizarre situation. Yeah, it was and, a, and an what will it yeah. be like? How how does the have you have you talked about it? I'm as not a cast? sure. Yeah. I haven't really talked with anyone about it. It was just kind of so. We'll see. No one says anything, anything there. <laughs> it's quite information is currency. No one's going to sit you down and go, "What we should do?" <laughs> how that, are you feeling? I, Act like it never happened. <laughs> no, I think Shane is funny as shit, and he. Uh, yeah. I think it's cool. SNL has him back. Good. Well, we you know? we talked to him about that podcast, and I asked him. You know, it's a. I don't know if uh, it's a line of demarcation in a sense. Was he doing an impression, a character of someone mm -hmm. who says things like that, racist things? Right. Or it's you know, tough... and and he said yes, but he didn't make it clear. <laughs> <laughs> right 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 yeah well I mean, and all that comedy things get thrown in oh, podcast used to be just underground in basements it's just like guys talking to each other it's almost like a cb radio and then mm -hmm. 
it comes out mm -hmm. and then you go, I don't even know what I said on that. And then you're like, oh, because you're talking to your friends. So yeah, I mean, I think he paid the price and you learn from things and move on, but it's nice. Everyone says, hey, the guy's funny. We paid the price, but now the price is right. I mean, he's, he's, he's doing very, very well. Yeah. Shane and he's a he's you a paid sweet... the price and now the price is right. <laughs> I <laughs> exactly bring back <laughs> pumpkin, bring back my favorite pumpkin, but have Shane do the Tom Hanks part. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like in unusual in the middle of February they do a David pumpkins without Tom Hanks. Oh, does that suck? You can't do it until oh, unless you. Yeah. You'd have to do some yeah special whatever I don't know but um, we did and yeah we did one another one with Tom Hanks and I think a couple funny. of seasons ago yes yes then, he he was just in town at that hmm. time yeah and called like you want to do oh right 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 um, David Pumpkins. Uh, Tom Hanks is in town anybody Tom's in town <laughs> throw on the pumpkin suit actually the uh, bigger the star the less energy Tom's here okay let me uh, let me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom who? That's such a funny observation. Um, Barack Obama sure. was dropping by. Um, oh, he doesn't say his name. He goes, Barack. Barack. His you know, Obama? Royal no. Highness. <laughs> Barack Higginbotham. <laughs> um, He's Vladimir Putin is in town. <laughs> He's circling the building. <laughs> okay, do it Do it on a scale of, of, of uh, these five sketches. Blink, what's your favorite? Nursing Home with Kate McGinnon, American Girl's st Store as the creepy mm, guy. Okay, Genetics wow. Lab with Sam Rockwell. Live Ooh, Report, you and Mar Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie, yeah. Uh, of oh, those that four. Live Report? Yeah, where Margot live. Robbie is a girl. <laughs> I, I'm just her husband, and it's is a that the husband that, that yeah. they can't believe you're together? They're I honestly, like, yeah, they were so playing you as like it was an impossible uh, yeah, matchup. So but I, yeah. I didn't really see it that way, you know. I wow, mean, well, that's very nice. I mean, I look at myself next to Margot Robbie and I go, that is an impossible matchup. I would uh, be like, he must be a billionaire. Um, right. Yeah. But all, that's all four me with of those every girl really, I dated really, in my life. Really crushed. Yeah, the that's dog one is fun. We've done that a few times and it's always fun because it was, it's usually a writer who has to go mm -hmm. down and be the dog's hands. Right. You're Genetics lab dog. where they make a dog, yeah. part dog, part human. We just say dog head man. And then the last time we did it was Martin Hurley. He went, was down there with, from Please Don't Destroy down there doing the hands, which is funny because he's, you know, such a funny dude. And yeah. He's on camera in these videos and we're like, hey, can you, yeah, bend down and snuggle up close to this no, dog you, in Panama. You need funny hands because you, a funny guy can get a couple extra laughs out of the hands. Exactly. Yes. So we ended up going. With Anything Martin. else for this kid, uh, Dana? I mean, I have so many questions for you guys. I have to come <laughs> back on and just ask you guys questions about all your sketches. Uh, we like being asked questions, but no one ever asks us any questions. No, <laughs> no way. <one> cares. <laughs> way. That's completely insane. I mean. <laughs> I grew up with you guys, so this has been awesome. And I'm not going to be able worse, to listen Dana. to it. He's like, well, I grew up with you guys. I remember when I was one, and I'm like, God, <laughs> it's getting worse. Like Before I was born, they told me about you guys? I mean, no, that was very formative for me. I would say I won't get... I, I said I wouldn't cry, but uh, this is kind of why you... I don't know if you said that. Why you want to <laughs> do this is that... Uh, it could be money, fame, all this stuff. But if someone, once in a while, someone will come up to me in an airport and say some bizarre sketch I did. And that me and my friends re reference that once a month. <laughs> you, you must be getting stuff like that with some of your sketches by now. It's nice to hear. It yeah. is nice. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. If I was in an airport and saw Dana, I'd say, Mr. Fung, on the night of the murders, <laughs> oh did God. you <laughs> shampoo? Oh, now your you're just hair. blowing my mind. That you just bought that's my that mind. one. That's a stand. Dana Stan had a stand up special on Comedy Central that aired mm. all the time. Yeah, in the 90s. <laughs> I did a 10 Marcia minute Clark. <laughs> bit on OJ. on OJ. The premise of the bit was <laughs> for OJ to be, uh, he, it's either he's guilty or he's framed. Let's unpack him being framed. 165 people had to participate spontaneously that night. We're framing OJ. You in? 
I like OJ, but it's just too good. And it goes on. And then I do a Marcy. What's her name? Yes. Yeah, Marsha Clark. Marcia Clark. Marcia. All my years as a prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> and then Johnny Cochran. Why are we even having a trial? Oh, yeah. <laughs> just as the cool. <laughs> I think he plays jazz trumpet at the end, right? <laughs> like, Your Honor. Your Honor. If I, I'd like to have sex with Your Honor. Just the, his effusive <laughs> yeah. compliments. And if I may, I'd like to play some jazz trumpet. You know, whatever. Uh, oh my that, God. You've, you've made my day, <laughs> Mikey. I mean, and then David, I could dork out on Tommy Boy for a perfect movie. For a long time. I'll never be able to listen to this. I'm going to be like, oh, you're such a dork. You just spent so much time going, I love your guys' stuff. No, no Dana was just texting me that. This guy sucks. <laughs> Edit this down. Maybe not no. We got a it. solid ten minutes in here somewhere. You know what, Mikey? <laughs> I, I can't find any. I do that all the time. I I just my, my persona <laughs> on this podcast is I do compliment people and I go maybe it's too syrupy, too over the top. But I assume most talented people have an inner critic somewhere. Am I any? Because what? Where's this drive coming from? Am I really any good? So it's good to hear it right. from. It, if you respect us or like our work, just to say, yeah, you're doing, you're kicking ass on I mean, SNL. You're doing wild, great. I wildly respect you both. You guys are very kind individuals for how legendary you are and the roles you have played in my life, especially. So talking to you guys was like truly a thrill and I appreciate it immensely. Damn. I would love well, to- that's nice come down and weirdly quote lines at you. It's weird when you just kind of throw a quote at someone, but it's like, for no, me, all that it. stuff is so, so ingrained in me. So you just mm -hmm. want to say, I know this to the person. Yes. Who, who I do did. it to people too. It's fine. I like it. I think it's compliment. <laughs> when you're sitting there writing a sketch or a stand up bit and you're meticulously trying to find the, the key to the kingdom basically. And, and you find it, and it's just a few words strung together, and then someone quotes it to you 30 years later, you're like, ooh, they really heard yeah. that? Someone heard yeah. that? You know? Yeah, so it's, it's weird. Cool. You kind of forget about the audience yeah. at home when you're mm -hmm. doing SNL. You're just like so focused on the studio audience and how mm -hmm. it is received. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, there's people at home who watched it. And sometimes people will reference a sketch that you know aired, but you thought, I don't know, I guess it's like a C plus, I guess. Yeah. Like it's but they easily love it. forgettable. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then someone will go, I love that one. And you're like, you saw that? Great. That's and you're, fantastic. You're, you're Donald Trump Jr., by the way, is a really, really funny take. And I assure you, you to get recognized oh, right. for that because you wear the wig and you. Yeah, um, sometimes. Yeah. 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 That people will be just play him like a 1980s movie villain. Play him like the guy who's like, I challenge you. To a ski race. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> and if we win, we're going to tear this thing down. Yeah. It's kind of like alpha frat boy energy, just coming super competitive. Yeah. It's very funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The Trump guys. It's fun to do. Yeah. With Eric, with Alex Moffat. Alex Moffat. Fun to do uh, the brothers. He's hysterical. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mikey. Thank and, you. It's uh, been a pleasure. Thanks for the Dana, compliments. Dana, thank you. Thank thanks you, guys. For, thanks for so much on. for having me. We appreciate Sorry it. Sorry about my uh, technical issues at the start. You guys Not are at awesome. all. It was, it was an absolute pleasure, and you're a good man. David, final thoughts? <laughs> yeah, Martin Short took two and a half hours to get on, yeah. so it's fine. Never worry, never worry about that. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> no! This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Please follow, subscribe, leave a like, a review, all the stuff, smash that button, whatever it is, wherever you get your podcasts. Fly on the Wall is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade. Jenna Weiss Berman of Odyssey, Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment, and Heather Santoro. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman. <laughs>